Good morning, you glorious sons of a bitches. Today I'm going to try something new, calling it pros and cons. I'll be taking a specific topic and discussing both sides of it, or as objectively as possible. Of course, I'll always be leaning towards one side or the other, but I'm not going to specifically tell you which. You'll probably be able to tell anyway. Today our topic is state-sponsored economies. I'll be flipping a normal American quarter to decide which goes first, the pros or the cons. The pros will be heads, the cons will be tails. It's like tails, so cons will go first. A little cheat sheet. <clears throat> first con to state sponsored counties, and this should be obvious, corruption. It's usually to give any government official power over uh, moderating something. He's going to abuse that power to get wealth or uh, privilege. For example, you have a commission that will uh, run uh, how much industrial waste any industrial manufacturer can put out. The people on that commission are going to be bribed or in some other way cajoled into allowing certain companies to produce more waste or certain industries to produce more waste than other industries and so on and so forth. So it's to mean the corruption factor. That's going to happen any time you have uh, government power over a certain thing. That people are going to be lobbying for that power. Uh, they'll keep out. It's possible that uh, politicians will pass legislation to keep new competition out of the market. If, for example, a certain company, a certain industry has a a key, a key grasp on a market then they can lobby politicians to uh, prevent, pass certain laws that will prevent new competition from being any serious threat. Uh, investing public funds into private markets is fairly self-evident. Anytime you have uh, the state taking part in a uh, nation's economy, they're going to be investing a certain amount of public funds into private businesses. Now, they may do, be trying to do this for a good reason, but nevertheless, one has to wonder, depending on your political views, is that how public funds should be uh, allocated? It could also, uh, having state involvement in a nation's economy can also prevent foreign investment from coming in. Uh, it can prevent foreigners from investing in that nation's businesses because of ide ideological differences, religious differences, uh, potential conflicts, and it also goes both ways. The, the uh, state government might wish to prevent a, uh, an industry that's headquarters, headquartered in that country from uh, investing in some foreign country that they don't want them to be giving money to. So politics is going to come into business, and that's a potentially dangerous and uh, unfortunate thing. Uh, it can also prevent the evolution of economies, as we saw uh, with the uh, financial crisis a few years ago. Um, by all rights, in a, in a, a free market, uh, a capitalist society, those banks should have failed, but they were bailed out by the government, obviously. And you can argue all day whether that was wrong or right. Perhaps someday we will. But uh, it does prevent the natural uh, evolution of an economy by tinkering with it, preventing certain things from happening that might otherwise have happened. I can also encourage unsound business practices, and this is again going back to the, the banking crisis a couple of years ago. I mean, uh, the state providing a safety net for these businesses, knowing that they bailed out or knowing that they can always get some sort of government assistance if they fuck up, uh, can make them more bold than they might otherwise be. Uh, I can also the government's very good at wasting money, so uh, it, could, it could be a big waste of money on failed enterprises. I think uh, there's been a lot of flack uh, for Obama over this. So he's thrown a lot of government funds at uh, private businesses that have subsequently uh, tanked, and it's just been a complete waste of government money. And finally, uh, it gives the government power to force businesses, privately owned businesses, to do things that uh, the government shouldn't be able to force an individual to do. Um, I mean, if 
uh, arguably, if a, a business wants to uh, never hire women, I think perhaps they have the right to do that if they're a privately owned business. And the government can force them to do otherwise. Um, so now we're going to move on to the pros. We just did our cons, obviously. Uh, the pros are, if the, if the government uh, takes part in a nation's economy, it can provide stability. Uh, and again, going back to the financial crisis, uh, the banking crisis a couple years ago, um, the, the government bailing out the banks probably did prevent quite a bit of instability from occurring. So that's a very big pro, I believe, uh, for this. Is the government can provide, in certain situations, uh, a large amount of stability to the economy if it is needed. Uh, it can encourage growth in uh, underdeveloped sectors uh, by pumping government funds, uh, public funds, into uh, any uh, any industri industrial sector that uh, potentially needs money but can't find investors. They can go to the government and they can get that money, and uh, it, it can potentially uh, allow that industrial sector to grow in something big and helpful and uh, good for the public and good for itself as well. Good for its investors. Um, government regulation can also prevent unfair business practices. Uh, in uh, ignoring the corruption side of things, uh, I, I believe that's true. That uh, uh, certain government laws regarding uh, unsafe business practices or something that's horrible for the environment, the government can create laws and uh, has the power to enforce them. Uh, that can potentially stop problems or at least provide punishment for any problems that arise. Um, on the flip side of encouraging growth, uh, a government infl or government uh, interference in uh, the, the economy can also, um, <coughs> excuse me, can also regulate growth. Uh, if, a certain like uh, the dot com boost, for example, if some things uh, growing too quickly for it to be safe, then the government can step in and uh, enact certain uh, regulations or legislation to slow that growth, or at least make sure it doesn't uh, collapse if something goes wrong. <clears throat> um, government can enact certain laws or legislation to uh, keep job or keep companies from outsourcing jobs. They can keep uh, you know, if you're in America, they can keep American jobs in America, they can keep German jobs in Germany, you know, whatever the case may be. So that, that can potentially be a good thing. It depends on the situation, but, uh, you know, if, if you really need that job and it, it could have been potentially been outsourced but the government stopped it, then you could see that as a good thing. Um, the government can obviously lend or invest public funds uh, to a business that needs it. If you're starting a small business and the government happens to be uh, subsidizing that, then you can probably get some sort of grant or something to help you start up your business. And that can be very beneficial for uh, a certain cases. Uh, the government, uh, government backing of an economy also, and this depends on the situation, but in many cases it can provide uh, uh, foreign investors with uh, faith in that country's economy. They say, oh, well, it's safer to invest in country A because country A has the, the government overwatching their industry to make sure they don't screw it so hard, to make sure that uh, their industry doesn't collapse suddenly on us. So, so it can provide that, that stability that I mentioned earlier that the government can provide uh, the economy uh, can also allow investors to invest uh, with uh, confidence. Um, also recently, uh, going back to what I mentioned about Obama investing and in choosing to invest in certain uh, companies, and obviously not just Obama, but we'll just use his name as a, a standby for government, um, <clears throat> promoting green technologies uh, that might not necessarily be beneficial right now or cost efficient right now, but the government can subsidize those until they are cost efficient or until they are um, beneficial. And lastly, uh, 
And this has happened quite a lot in, in, in the past, uh, in the 60s and 70s and so on, was uh, government uh, stepping in to promote uh, cultural ideals, like integration or uh, trying to suppress racism. Of course, this can go both ways. It can go both for the good and for the bad. Uh, but that is a potential, or, uh, excuse me, a potential pro, so I thought I'd mention it. Uh, that's all I have for the pros. I'm sure anyone watching this can think of additional pros or cons, but uh, that's all I had off the top of my head. So give it some thought, see which side you agree with, and uh, if you feel up to it, comment and argue either for one side or the other, or perhaps somewhere in the middle. For now, off leadership.